Hello guys, welcome back. Wolf is feeling fine, he's happy, you can tell. He has his ball in his mouth again. <laughs> what a dog. Wolf! That's it. Wolf! Say hi to everybody. Wolf! Buddy! 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 Get back! I'm very glad to see him like this. Wolf! What the dog? So guys, before we begin, I'm going to show you something. This is the black with three or four hands don't remember exactly also the white here and in the bow not in the stern because we have to work a little bit over here uh, we have the entire part ready uh, just the black here i had a spill of white but don't care because uh, everything is going to be painted differently from point and uh, of the uh, hull and down and what I need to show to you is how she looks with the lights on so give me a moment to turn off the lights and turn on the titanic lights take a look at that no light bleeding in no place and she's just of course Everything here will be covered because there's going to be another tech. But look at the side. Just amazing. 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 I can sit here with the hours and watch this. This is going to be one of my best projects ever. It is a very beautiful model. It is. It has the signature of Okre, and now it has my signature, the signature of John, in all these LED lights. So, let me turn on the lights again, turn off the Titanic lights, and we'll proceed of painting the rest of the hull. Now, guys, <coughs> uh, I have to draw a line, so I will know. Uh, where is the point that I have to paint the dark red? This is the dark red from Oak, of course. And below. To do that, uh, the drawings tell me to have a measurement of 4 millimeters from the lower uh, uh, part of the keel and above. Uh, of course, as you can see, I have placed the Titanic over to its base, so it will be easier for me to turn it around without scratching the lower surface. Uh, it's going to be painted though, but I don't want to resand everything. And uh, I'm going to use this construction that I have made for the Beagle, if you remember. Uh, I have already measured up that the base and the, the top of uh, the part that I need that says the, in the drawings that are 4 mm are 7.8 mm. So the base is 3.8. Uh, also, uh, sorry, the base is not 3.8, it's 3.3 .3 because I have half uh, centimeter, 5 millimeters, the base of uh, this construction. What I'm going to do now is use this thing and mark a line all the way uh, from bow to stern and on the other side. Uh, probably I'm going to do that several times so I will be able to uh, tell the difference from the pencil mark over to the black color uh, and of course I need the Titanic to be steady let's do that I don't want to disrupt the view. I 
This will take some time. Let me do that and I'll get back to you. As you can see, I use some mask, mask tape. I have marked the area which needed to be painted. Of course, it's all the lower part. I have the curve that I need. You see over here. So let me do the painting because it's going to take three coats probably and that will take some time and I'll get back to you to continue. And done. After many hours of painting and correction, got it. So, <clears throat> it's even <coughs> more beautiful. <clears throat> And the next step is to place the rudder, also the propellers. So, let me gather my equipment. I'm going to paint the propellers first, no need to do that together. And uh, we will make and place the rudder together. Now guys, I have painted the propellers and uh, I have found out that the axle that the propellers have are much 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 bigger but from the two millimeters of the hole that I have opened up in the side ones and also the middle one which is metallic it's also much much bigger uh, but in the middle one I have no access anymore because I have this piece over it and here if I tried to open up uh, around three millimeters the hole that I need this is four millimeters I will definitely uh, destroy everything and I don't want to do that so what I did is I used the Dremel and make the axle a little bit uh, thinner able to fit so now it's time to glue them better to insert the middle one first and then the other one Perfect. Now, as you can see, they are beautiful. Let me find out what the pieces we need for the rudder are and I'll get back to you to continue. So guys, this is the piece. It's prefixed, as you can see. It needs a lot of sanding and this is the other piece that I'm going to use uh, along the the markings let's say of the rudder we're going to place pieces like this like this like this in every single axis here uh, on the opposite side of course and uh, you'll see how we'll go we'll do it but for now what i see here is that i have to round up everything so i have to make this piece uh, at the edge here to be rounded and more narrow I have to sand it a lot and uh, probably I have to do a little bit over here definitely over here I have to make it rounder so uh, this means that I have to do a lot of sanding let me do that and I'll get back to you to show you the finishing result and proceed now guys as you can see 
I have make that round. Uh, let me show you something. The piece here needs to have, uh, like I said before, like that pieces of wood. These pieces of wood are mine for my own stock. The pieces that we need is one by three, as it says in the instructions. This is one by three. As you can see, the one by three here exceeds this, so that means I need to do a lot of cutting, uh, not only here but along the way. That's not something that I want, but if I use one by two, as you can see, it's a perfect fit. All I have to do is sanding. So it can be done with a one by three, but there is a lot of work. Uh, to make this happen so I will use the one by 2 for my own stock just to save me some extra work uh, these pieces must go must begin over here I will begin it exactly over here so I will be able to sand it and make it look better and end up at the edge. At the edge it's probably better to make it uh, a little bit uh, curved with uh, the soldering iron just to make it fit. Doesn't need much, just a little, but it's better to do that. So. Uh, let me heat up the soldering iron and get back to you And here we are guys as you can see I have made just a slight bend and I'm going to glue it now Now I'm going to do exactly the same for all these excess points also on the other side and I'll get back to you to continue. Got it guys. Now I have to do a lot of sanding. I have to make this disappear, make it evenly and also round up this part of uh, these edges. Uh, this edge is easier to round it up. This hard, this is harder to make this disappear. Uh, a lot of sanding. Let me do that, and I'll get back to you. And I have it. As you can see, it finishes beautifully in all the edge, and also here is rounded up. It's perfect. All it is now is to glue it and paint it. Uh, that's not a hard job to do and does not require to be filmed, of course. This will be glued like this. Of course, I have to cut a little bit this edge to make it fit. That's not hard to do. And definitely, I need to paint it according to the lines of the ship. So, let me do that because this will take a while and I'll get back to you to show you the finishing result. And red guys, as you see the paint is still drying, but it looks magnificent. It's very very beautiful. 
So guys, this was the painting of the lower part of the hull and also the making and placing of the rudder. Thank you very much for watching. Me and Wolf. <laughs> we will see you in our next step.